In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of spreadsheet calculations. This is a spreadsheet that I put up on this week's Substack that looks at diversification versus diversification. So can we have too many assets in our portfolio? And the main reason this is out here is not to show you a perfectly diversified portfolio or anything like that. Instead, it's just a way to look at how numbers change over time and how that can influence our decision making. So what I did was every year I would teach investments too in the spring. And so I would look at a five year window of some stocks that we would mentioned in class you can see Deer, Caterpillar, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and so on. And what I tried to do is grab five years of stock return data. And I think there are 45 companies in this handout. And then I would create a correlation matrix because correlation is one of the variables that you need to have a portfolio along with expected return and standard deviation. And if you have those three things, you should be able to create a well-diversified portfolio. The key is we've got data from the past, not data from the present. So let me talk briefly about what this shows. And you can see it's the correlation matrix. Notice you never have a number greater than one you do see one up here, Deer is correlated 100% with itself, but it's only correlated 65% with Caterpillar, 29% with Coca-Cola, negative 0.02% with NIC, which is effectively zero. And correlations can range between positive one and negative one. Now, one thing you can see is I've highlighted the negative correlations on here. Most of these are really small numbers, but they give you an idea. Okay, here is a negative 0.13, negative 0.14. And so if we look at the average correlation, we should expect to see firm specific risk plus market risk combined to create total risk. And if we have just one stock, we're going to have firm specific and market risk combined in both. If we have five stocks, we're going to reduce the firm specific risk a little bit because those five stocks aren't moving perfectly together. They're going to have a correlation of less than one, and that's going to help diversify away some of the risk. If we get up to 100 stocks, now we're really diversifying away our risk because one stock represents only 1% of our portfolio. Even if that stock were to go bankrupt, we still have 99 other stocks and we're in good shape. So if we think of diversification, if you have a one stock portfolio, you have no diversification. If you have a five stock portfolio, you've got a little bit of diversification. And if you've got a hundred stock portfolio, you're pretty well diversified. Now, another thing I just kind of caught myself, I'm referring to stocks. You really want to think in terms of assets. And this is just stocks here because that's kind of what I was doing in class is talking about correlation of stocks. But you probably want to think about fixed income and gold ETFs and real estate funds, all kinds of different investments along those lines to truly diversify your portfolio. And instead of just U.S. stocks, you probably want to have international stocks and international bonds and international real estate. The more different things you have in your portfolio, the better your diversification is going to be. Question is, can you get too many things? Can you be overly diversified or as it's oftentimes called, diversified? And so this is kind of just a brief overview of diversification. You can see the average correlation for every stock in this portfolio is 0.29. That again is looking at all kinds. You can see this formula here. It's a huge formula looking at all the correlations and taking an average of them. And this is going to be kind of our total risk measurement. If we look at 
stocks within the same industry. So Deer, Caterpillar, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Boston Beer, and Molson Coors. This is really surprising to me, but it's probably one of them had a bad five-year stretch. Um, Exxon BP. You can see the closer we get the companies, the higher the correlations are going to tend to be. And that's because if we look at companies within the same industry, the things that are going to affect Ford and Toyota, bad things for Ford typically are bad for Toyota. Now, not all the time. Ford may introduce a brand new car that's really successful. Toyota may introduce an ugly lineup and nobody wants to buy them. But by and large, things that are good for Ford are going to be good for Toyota. And so correlations tend to be higher you reduce your diversification if you're within the same industry. Now, we're not going to look at this, but this is just a correlation with the S&P 500. It's just coincidence that it's exactly the same. You should expect that to be higher on average than the correlation between pairs of stocks. And here I just did a quick count of how many combinations had negative correlation, so there's a negative, there's a negative, there's a negative, and you can see there's quite a few negatives in there, but it's actually less than 1 in 20 negative correlations. So this is historical data. We've got the correlation. We've got the average annual return. Okay, take a look at this. Deer over the previous five years had a 31% return. Caterpillar had a 25% return, and you can see these returns vary all over the map. Molson Coors, very poor performance, lost almost 12% a year. Walmart, 21%, and you can see quite a bit of variance. Standard deviation, again, you can see quite a bit of variance. Now, one of the things that I tried to do in this spreadsheet is take a look at, okay, what was the return over the last few years for Exxon and BP? These both had negative returns over the previous five years. I looked since 21, and the returns are just phenomenal. They're probably greater than 50% returns annualized. I think Exxon was up to almost 100% returns just shooting through the roof on that over the last year and a half. I looked at returns from the high return stocks like Lululemon and uh, Boston Beer. They were underperforming over that time period. So one thing you can tell is that this average annual return it's not very reliable, it doesn't hold up well. If I look at standard deviations and I grab some of the high standard deviation stocks on here, such as Boston Beer, Foot Locker. I didn't use American Outdoors because they had a spinoff. And I think Lululemon was the other one that I looked at. Their correlations are I mean, their standard deviations are largely similar to what they were in the past. Boston Beer is an aggressive company. If I look at the low correlation stocks like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, they tend to have low standard deviations going forward. So standard deviation is fairly reliable from one period to the next. The return, not so much. Standard deviation is fairly reliable. Next, I wanted to look at beta. And so I looked at high beta stocks, which were all in the same industry, obviously. They're high beta or high correlation stocks going forward. So if I look at Coca Cola and Pepsi, and I look at Exxon and BP, they're going to be high correlations over the past five years. They're going to be high correlations over the next five years. Now, that might not be true for something like the Boston Beer Molson Coors because, again, if we look at the average annual return, they're very different, and that's causing a distortion because Boston Beer had a great previous five years. 
and TAP or Molson Coors had a bad five years. But typically, stocks within the same industries are going to have high correlations. I looked at the negative correlations, 0 0.14, 0 0.13, 0 0.13. And what I found is most of those came up somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3 over the next five or next year and a half. Part of the reason for that is a lot of this correlation data is noise. You can't tell me that correlation of Salesforce and Walmart is 0.17, and that's different from Walmart and Cerner, which is 0.21. We don't have that kind of precision in our forecast. So what we find is correlations within industries tend to be high. Correlations across industries tend to move towards the average correlation, typically around 0.25 to 0.3. So that's some of the data analysis that we get as we look through this spreadsheet. And with that, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you real quick is if you look, we're missing some of the data here. If you want to see that, you can go to Format, Hide and Unhide, and you want to Unhide Rows. And then up here, Format, Unhide Columns, and that will show you those missing columns that were in there. The reason for that is just it was way too big of a spreadsheet to print on one page was pretty tiny to get it on one page and that was with taking out a lot of the data, but it was still legible. When I tried doing the full spreadsheet, it was not legible at all. So I had to cut out some rows before I printed off that handout for class. And that wraps up this video. Thank you.